from Gaiman Petro. It's the DC3 Coaches Show. <laughs> And now here's your host, Ryan Osmus. Hi guys, welcome and thanks for joining us. On tonight's show, we will ask DC3 Athletic Director Jacob Ripple about news from the athletic department, as well as changes to some Jayhawk Conference regulations and how those changes will impact Conquistador Athletics. Following Jacob, we will meet DC3's newest coach and Rachel Williams. Coach Williams is our new volleyball head coach and just joined us just joined the school a few weeks ago and we're excited to hear what she has planned for her team this season. Finally, Conked football coach Gary Thomas will stop by and tell us how preseason practices have shaped up, as well as provide insight into what Conk fans can expect to see when last year's conference champion, Independence Community College, rolls into town next Thursday to open the season. So we've got a lot to cover. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get into it. So let's bring out our first guest. With over a dozen years of coaching and administrative experience in the Jayhawk Conference alone, we are certainly proud to have him. Please welcome Athletic Director Jacob Ripple to the stage. Thank you, Ryan. Good evening, Jake, nice to see you. You too, thanks for, uh, thanks for everybody for being here. Thank you, obviously, for doing this. Yeah, absolutely, before we get into the questions, I wanted to say what a, uh, what a wonderful venue. I mean, this is quite the uh, setup. We got a very nice uh, crowd, so a big thank you to uh, Gaiman Petro as well as to all the fans that came out this evening. There's no doubt. You know, uh, Gaiman Petro has been a huge key to making this work. Their partnership and their willingness to jump in has been uh, has made this go a lot easier than than what it was at the beginning. So we're very excited about what they've done and and the partnership and the willingness that they've had to throw behind this and and really make this a good situation for our athletic department. So we really can't thank David Hodge and, and his crew with Guyman Petro enough for, for what they've done. Absolutely, this is, this is uh, excellent. Now before we get into a couple of uh, athletic questions, I wanted to, uh, for those that don't know, you're actually in a, entering your second season as athletic director for Dodge City Community College. And some might not know that you're a, a hometown kid. We're actually both hometown kids grew up together played sports together so it's really neat to be here on the stage uh, uh, with you but I want to do uh, ask what what you know what's it like to be back home uh, serving Dodge City Community College and the community in this uh, in this capacity got to be a pretty neat thing it, it really has been it's it's been a blessing to be back uh, you know back in Dodge City obviously growing up uh, there was a lot of uh, pride taken in athletics and and what we did obviously you and I going back as far as we did and and playing back to even when we were 13 and 14 years old playing playing some Babe Ruth baseball together and, and then moving on into high school football and also what the the place that the college had in the community and I think bringing some of that back and trying to be more involved in the community bring the college back to being more involved in the community has been a big piece of what I've wanted to do since we've been back uh, been here a year had a year uh, year under my belt now and really trying to spread out and do some things like this coaches show to to make things work and to get back into the community and obviously uh, seeing people here seeing the excitement of people being here and, and coming down to see what's going on has, has been a big piece of this very excited about the crowd that we have tonight hope yeah. that uh, excellent hope crowd. that we can carry that over into uh, obviously the year as as we do this and make this kind of a, a Monday night tradition I guess but uh, you know, the biggest piece is having people that are involved in the community and uh, getting community back involved with the college and especially Conquistador Athletics. Absolutely. I, I see you just about every day, but I don't know if I've ever told you <laughs> welcome back home. So it's excellent to have you back. I, you're doing a great job. We appreciate uh, all that you're doing for the college and the, and the community. Well, thank you. You know, it's, it's really nice to, to be back, be a part of the community and, and honestly to work with you know, work with familiar faces and people that I know like yourself and, and uh, you know, people like Brandy Ferguson and, yeah, and Heather absolutely. Smith, those people, those uh, people that I've known for a while. So it's really nice to be back and working with those people. Excellent. So there are a, uh, uh, there's a few changes that have taken place within the uh, conference as it relates to, uh, uh, to regulations. Do you want to share a little bit about some of those uh, regulation changes to the, to the Jayhawk Conference with us? Yeah, you know, a couple of years ago, the Jayhawk Conference really wanted to make a push to be 
um, even more competitive nationally than what we've been. And I, I think obviously you've seen people be, uh, different teams in this conference be very competitive at the national level, you know, including our, our own golf team. They've been very successful and, and we've had other teams successful as well. But um, that was one of the big pushes. And so what they did in the past, uh, there were limitations on the scholarship roster, the roster number for out-of-state student athletes on strictly football and men's and women's basketball. And that roster limitation went away a year ago, so we saw a lot of difference uh, a year ago with that. And now you're seeing some changes in how the scholarships are structured even. Um, some schools in our, they have, we're playing by the NJCA rules now, uh, which we hadn't been doing. Our conference actually had more restrictions on ourselves than what the NJCA did. So we're playing by NJCA rules now uh, on a more of an even playing field with some of the other uh, conferences and some of the other schools. And so uh, theoretically you can have some more scholarship money. Um, at this point we're still trying to figure out what that looks like for Dodge City Community College. Um, so that's one of the things that we're really putting some effort into. But uh, you've seen some schools in our conference already put some more money uh, into some athletic scholarships. Um, and you're seeing that a little bit this year, but I don't think anybody's going overboard. I think the, the concern was somebody was going to go out and just offer every single student athlete a, a full ride scholarship, and that's just not realistic. None of us have that kind of money. We're not operating on budgets like the NJ or the NCA Division One schools are, but we're also all trying to do the best that we can to make it work for our institutions. Absolutely, I appreciate that. Uh that update we'll keep the uh, we'll keep the fans uh, uh, informed as we move through uh, throughout the rest of the uh, the season. But I had one final one final question. I wanted to uh, ask. We we kick off. Uh, I think formally the season begins Wednesday with a volleyball. Then we have a home football game. We'll speak to both of those uh, coaches. But season's getting ready to get uh, ramped up in uh, many of our sports. Any overall all thoughts and expectations for our for our programs this year? Well, obviously we're excited about the new year. You look at. Uh, Look at where we are, and, and uh, actually the home season starts on Wednesday as well with men's and women's soccer. Oh, yes, absolutely. Off against, yes. Uh, Trinidad State College, and then obviously home football on Thursday. So got a lot going on. We're very excited about our new coaches, uh, very excited about where we are with football. I think Coach Thomas Ox obviously will be up here. I think he's got a chance to be a, a special team. So, uh, and then we'll move into our other sports. But we've got a lot of stuff going on. Very, very excited about what, what we're doing this year. Well, Athletic Director Ripper, we really appreciate your time. Great seeing you, man. Uh, thank you for, for coming in and visiting with us and giving us an update on uh, DC3 Athletics. Absolutely. Thanks for evening. having me, Ryan. Thank you. Look forward thank you to so this. much. Rachel Williams enters her first year as the head volleyball coach at DC3 but she brings a world of experience to the job. Coach Williams was a member of four NCAA national tournament teams and earned a Pac-10 championship at the University of Arizona in 2000. She has coached and recru recruited volleyball for over 10 years at several different levels, including three stops at NCAA Division I schools. We're thrilled to have her join our team here at DC3. Let's welcome Coach Williams to Dodge City and the DC3 Coaches Show. Coach Williams, Hi, very nice to meet you. How you doing? Nice to see you. Very excited that you're that you're here. You are really, literally, brand new to the to the staff. Our newest uh, newest coach, brand new to the community, just got here a uh, a few weeks ago. As I was uh, just now sharing with uh, with the audience, you got a really interesting um, uh, background, a lot of experience. Why don't you share with the community and the fans a little bit about about yourself and your experiences? You know, I've been just about everywhere. Um, most recently in Kansas City, I owned a volleyball club. Uh, I love working with the youth and getting those guys interested in scholarships and college opportunities. Uh, prior to that, I was at Portland State up in Oregon. Um, spent about two years up there. Uh, it was a pretty interesting experience. Um, you know, game goes pretty fast at D1. Yeah. Um, before that, I was at Louisiana Tech. Uh, I worked with a Brazilian coach there. Um, a lot of different antics and styles and tactics with him. Um, and prior to that, I was at Northern Arizona University. So um, a lot of Division One experience. Um, I've also worked at some junior colleges. I've worked at, uh, you know, high school level. Name it, I've been there. Right, well, it's wonderful to have you on, uh, on board. Glad you're here. 
uh, meeting the uh, community and some of the fans, and we wish you the best of luck. Uh, yeah, obviously, this awesome year we'll know you're going to do you're going to do a, a great job. Um, now, I know that you've had a couple of uh, you had an inter squad scrimmage, I believe, and a couple of uh, scrimmages against Butler County Community College as well as uh, Oklahoma Panhandle State University. I actually played football there for uh, oh, no uh, for a time. But based on your uh, scrimmages, uh, inter uh, inter squad scrimmage, and then the practices you've had throughout the several weeks. What's the assessment of your of your team? What are you liking and what are you thinking you might need to work on a little bit? You know, I got here and I inherited the group. Uh, so, you know, that's always an interesting thing. I think the biggest thing to make sure that is instilled is the trust factor. Um, they came in thinking they were going to have one thing and now they've got something different, you know. So um, I'm not sure what the previous style was, but my, my style and the mantra of what we're trying to do is go big. Um, we're also trying to go fast, so that might be a little bit different from what they're used to as well. Um, it was awesome being at home with uh, the inner squad scrimmage uh, in front of our home crowd. Everybody was there. It was nice and loud. It was good to see everyone. I thought the girls went hard after each other. Um, but again, against Panhandle, it was nice to see some different people. Uh, yes. and, and also at Butler, it was nice to see some of the people that we're going to be seeing here in a couple weeks. Um, including Neosho, who we're going to see on Wednesday. Um, interestingly enough, we I didn't play my starting setter against them. We kind of fiddled around with a bunch of different kids in different positions and different lineups. Um, didn't really want to give away everything that they'd see on Wednesday. So, But that group was loud and they were hungry and uh, it'll be a good match on Wednesday. Excellent. So as you've already alluded to, you opened the uh, season at Neosho Community College on uh, Wednesday. Uh, Start time is 6 p.m. Yes. Um, so just any overall general thoughts about what to expect from Neosho and kind of uh, expectations for the uh, outlook for the for the year? You know, Neosho is a good group. Um, like I said, we were at Butler and it felt like we were at Neosho already. They were nice and loud and, you know, they, they seemed to really gel and, and be together. Um, and that's something that our group is trying to learn. Stay together, go big, um, and go fast. And I feel like once we're able to trust those things, we're going to be pretty darn good. Excellent. So. Well, I got one more final final question. I think we have a few more a few more minutes um, left. I'll, I'll speak with this. Uh, I'll ask this of uh, Coach uh, Thomas as well. But of course, Dodge City Community College athletes—they are student um, athletes. So, just your philosophy on the uh, student athlete and the expectations you have of your athletes in uh, of your athletes in the classroom. You know, being a student athlete is really special. Um, there's something really cool about the fall season that no other season can replicate. And um, you know. First and foremost, kids have to have good grades. They've got to go to classes. They've got to be interested in what they're studying. I think those things are the most important things, um, of course. And then comes athletics, you know. Um, athletics, especially in my world, brought so much for me. You know, teaching discipline and trust and just all the things that have brought me to this point in my life. Um, I'm really excited for the girls to learn those things and for the student athlete base to learn those things too. I think we've got a great coaching staff. We've got a great athletic director in uh, Mr. Ripple. And um, it's just, it's been a really cool start. Well, I really want to thank you for uh, for coming in. We best of luck for the uh, season. It's a pleasure and an honor to uh, to have you. Uh, we'll be out supporting you uh, um, all year. So awesome. thank you for coming in. Thank we you really so appreciate much, it. Thank Ryan. you so much. Appreciate have it. a nice evening. All thank right. you. Conquistador head football coach Gary Thomas is in his 17th year of coaching football and his eighth year at DC3. The 2015 Jayhawk Conference Coach of the Year, Coach Thomas has two of the top junior college players in the country on the squad this season. Sophomore wideout Eugene Minter and sophomore linebacker Lakia Henry are expected to help the cons improve on 2017's four and seven finish. Cock fans, help me welcome Coach Gary Thomas to the DC3 Coaches Show. What's up, Coach? How are you doing? How you doing, man? Nice to see you. Hey, so th 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 this is wonderful. Wonderful to have uh, Athletic Director Ripple here. Wonderful to have Coach uh, Coach Williams here to learn about uh, volleyball, get excited about the upcoming football season, and of course kicking off a football season this uh, this Thursday. Absolutely. So as I was speaking with uh, Coach Williams, she's had a couple of inter-squad scrimmage and a couple of scrimmages against a couple of the other schools in the area. You had a chance to have your inter-squad scrimmage just this past uh, past week. Looked like you got a really talented uh, bunch. Uh, looked like they did a lot of good things, but still may have a few things to uh, work on. What'd you see out of your, out of your team in the inter-squad scrimmage last week? <laughs> We've got a lot of things to work on. Uh, you always have things to work on, but um, I, I thought we did a lot of things well on, on both sides of the ball. I, I was actually happy with the, the tempo, I was happy with the energy, I was happy with the execution. 
the problem with playing yourself so much is that you you create habits that aren't realistic. They're, you're not learning the scheme, you're learning to play against the other guy and you've seen that route over and over again or you've seen that block over and over again. So you're not, you're not learning exactly what we need you to learn, you're just learning it that way. So then when you see somebody different, it's, it's not like you knew the rule, you were playing the technique that, that you just went over and over and over again and, and, and you actually created a bad habit. So that's why being able to play other people, and in our first couple years here we always scrimmaged at another team, and that was a valuable thing for us because we could evaluate how guys were going to react against different people, um, not only from a from a stressful situation standpoint, from also but a, from also from a different you know there's the, the analogy there's a million ways to skin a cat, there's a million ways to run an offense and a defense, and, <laughs> right? And and none of them are very similar, but they're all effective. So um, our guys sometimes create bad habits so that when we go out and play a new a new opponent, a new competitor, we do things that are pretty uncharacteristic of us and and they make mistakes because they they broke a rule that we had taught them offensively and defensively because they they got so accustomed to doing it a certain way when they had to react to a different situation they didn't react well. Yeah. So this uh, this Thursday, as I've already noted, we have uh, your home opener, yep. uh, home conference opener. Yep. And you have the defending conference champion yep. and uh, preseason number five ranked team in the country, Independence Pirates. Yep. Independence Pirates rolling into uh, rolling into town. What's your overall thoughts about Independence coming into town? What are the uh, expectations? What are you expecting to see from your from your team? Um, well, I mean, Independence, they'll be athletic. Uh, they're going to be long, athletic. They'll be big. Uh, they'll be fast. I mean, but I think everybody in the conference will be, as are we. Um, it's going to come down to execution. Uh, you know, what team makes the least amount of mistakes, not necessarily a team that makes the most big plays. Um, you know, they've got a, they're going to come in with, with a little bit of a different scheme uh, offensively, come in with more of an athletic quarterback, try to get him in space, and, and you know, if our guys can, can tackle him, I mean, our guys will fit where they're supposed to fit. It's going to end up being a one-on-one, -on -one, our guy and their guy, and if our guy can tackle him, I, I, think we'll, I think we'll eliminate a lot of the run game stuff that, that they're probably doing. Uh, which is what we did last year for a good part of the game. We just didn't do it enough. Um, you know, offensively, they we think we know what they're going to do. Uh, I think they have a, a few adjustments from the spring that we've caught on to. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a cat and mouse game, I think, early um, in, in seeing if we can out call them or if, if they get us uh, outgunned at the point of attack. Um, but I think the. I think the common denominator with both teams is, is playing consistent defense and being able to run the football and establish a run game early and often. Uh, I don't think either one of us are going to live and die by the pass. Uh, I'm not saying it won't be a factor in the outcome of the game, but I think to, to find some rhythm, rhythm and find some stability, especially early in the game, I think the run game is going to be key for both of us. Excellent. So one of the exciting things about uh, this show yeah. is that we get the opportunity to not only showcase our coaches and our programs as a whole, but we get to concentrate or showcase some of our individual athletes. Uh -huh. um, as I mentioned in the opener, you got uh, two of the top recruits in the country playing yep. for you uh, this year. You want to speak a little bit about your talent level and some of those uh, top recruits that you have this year on the team? Well, traditionally we've had, you know, in my six years here, we've actually had the number one recruit in the nation at his position like six times. Um, and you know, one of the, Mark Thompson, who's now playing for the Baltimore Ravens, um, um, you know, Gary Johnson, who's now playing for University of Texas, who is an All Big Twelve guy, Marquise Blair, who's now playing for University of Utah. Uh, there's been a bunch of them, but uh, this year we have Lakia Henry, who's the number one linebacker, number one rated linebacker in the country, um, and he's committed to the University of Tennessee. Uh, um, had a bunch of offers, uh, but this team, you know, last year we we were talented. Um, but we were young and we were immature and then we got banged up and then we lost a couple games and lost focus and, and the whole thing kind of went sideways pretty fast. Um, and in retooling in the offseason, you know, we got rid of some of the, the guys that weren't serious about, you know, what it is that, that we're trying to accomplish here. Um, but this year is, is very similar to our 2015 team that won the conference championship. We got a lot of guys back, uh, a lot of highly recruited guys back. I mean, we've got three returning starters on the offensive line. And all three of those guys will be power five guys. Um, uh, Khalif will start a left tackle for us. He'll be he'll be one of the top ten tackles in the country. Uh, Martin Brooks, 
uh, who will start left guard for us. He's already got a, a KU offer and, and a few others. Um, Demarcus Tenzu who will start at right guard for us. He's already he's a Division One bounce back, but uh, he'll be a Power Five guy. He's maybe the most talented of all of them. Uh, we brought in a, a transfer from Eastern Michigan uh, that'll be a, a one-year guy for us, but he's a 6'6", 300-pound, you know, long wingspan. He'll be a Division One guy. So that group, is, and we're hoping, okay, will be the backbone of what we do. Um, at the wide receiver position, we've got uh, four guys that, that I think are, are extremely talented, but three of them uh, are pretty highly recruited guys already. Eugene Minter, he's committed to UAV, but he's got like five other offers. Uh, Tyrese Ritchie, who signed with University of Northern, or Northern Illinois University out of high school, uh, he'll end up being a Division One guy. And then Terrell Warner, I think, will be the most talented potentially out of all of them um, in, in his second year. And that's not to mention the, the three young guys that are playing that, that are going to be equally as good as them. Just nobody knows who they are yet. Um, yeah. You know, Zach Leininger, our tight end, he'll be a Division One guy. Uh, he's a 4.0 GPA. I mean, all, all the things that you could want in an athlete. Um, defensively, we've got, a, I think, six guys back that started a game for us on the defensive line last year. Um, you know, little known fact, that in, in our 11 football games last year, we never started the same 11 people two times. That's how injured we were. Yeah. Um, it was just, I mean, it was uh, every week it was trying to figure out who was healthy, who, who we have to move up, who's going to play that's never played before, and, and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, obviously, we got Lakia back, and, and he's doing a good job. Um, some of the younger linebackers, I think, will have a chance to, to contribute. Um, but we have three starting safeties back that all started significant games for us last year. Uh, Kobe Perry, who's already had, has an offer from Middle Tennessee State. Uh, Darius Satterwhite, who will be a Division One guy, and Darius Miller, uh, who started like the last five games for us last year and led our team in interceptions. So all three of those guys are back. There's only two starting safeties, but we have three guys back that started, and they'll all play a significant role for us. Um, so we've got a lot of experience back, and, and, and it makes you, gives you kind of a comfort level of what you're capable of. Uh, I think the two scariest positions are probably running back, I think depth-wise, uh, and corner. Uh, just not that we're not talented, but none of the guys that we're going to play on Thursday have ever taken a, a college snap. Um, you know, they were, you know, three months ago, they were 12th graders. Right, so, uh, absolutely. And that's a scary thing when you're going into a college football game, especially at this level, uh, with the talent level that we're going to see. So, um, you know, we'll see. I think everywhere else, I, I feel like we'll we'll be even with everybody else. It's just staying healthy in those positions and, and limiting our mistakes at those positions because those are ones that you know big plays can happen uh, either for you or against you. Yeah, sitting in the stands, I quarterback play, skilled positions. It looks like you guys are possibly a little bigger up front this year on the offensive off, yeah. offensive line. It looked like you had some yeah. good we good are. size and the defense longer. and offensive line were really pushing each other around. A lot longer, a lot heavier, yeah. So yeah, I, this is a wonderful opportunity. It's great to be able to showcase the talent and the individ, uh, and our young uh, men in a, in a show, uh, showcase them in a situation and a setting like this. So thank you for sharing about all the talented Absolutely. young men you brought to the community this year. Now to piggyback off of that question, one of the things that most fans are always interested in, me, me included, right. is that most of our student athletes that come to Dot City Community College, especially amongst our football players, they're looking to take the next step, looking, go, looking to go to the next level. Can you share a little bit about where some of your uh, student athletes are from the last couple of years, or we can find them at this year where they might be uh, playing at? Absolutely. Um, we've actually got currently four, well, I have four on NFL rosters. Um, Mark Thompson, who we mentioned earlier, is playing for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Mike Thomas, who played receiver for us here in 2013, is in his third year with Los Angeles Rams. Uh, Johnny Holden, who played wide receiver for me actually at College of DuPage my last year there, he's in his third year with uh, uh, the Los Angeles Raiders. Um, and then there's a defensive end from Coach Majeski's uh, last year that carried over into my first year here. Um, and he, last year, was with the Titans. Oh. Um, so again, four, you got four guys on NFL rosters. As far as Division One guys, I think we're at like 60-something right now. Um, off of last year's class, uh, Jared Sylvester was our uh, left tackle. He's at the University of New Mexico. Um, Jake Whitehead was our freshman center. Uh, and he just signed a couple weeks ago with uh, Northern Alabama, or North Alabama University. Uh, we actually just lost a tight end like three days ago. Um, Jordan Rodriguez, who's a kid who transferred in here in January. Uh, just got an offer from University of Tulsa, and they took him right now. Um, all four of our wide receivers went to Division One schools. Um, Caleb Mills went to New Mexico State. Jerry Hanks went to Robert Morris on the East Coast. Uh, Braxton Haley went to Illinois State. 
and Austin Watkins went to UAB. So all four of those guys are, are Division One guys. Uh, AJ Walker, our tailback, went to Lamar University right outside of Houston. So another Division One guy. That's like, that's like six or seven on offense. Um, defensively, we were young. We started like nine freshmen on defense last year, so we didn't have a ton. Uh, that went on to, to sign Division One scholarships. Both of our three of our corners ended up signing. Uh, Damian Cremini went to uh, Grambling, and then uh, Jordan Seminot and Brazon Crenshaw both actually went to Texas A&M Kingsville, uh, which is pretty close to their hometowns and was a good opportunity for them. So, um, other than that, we have everybody back on defense, so we really didn't lose a lot of people. Which is, you know, when you're talking from a recruiting standpoint, you're going, "Wow, you didn't have very many defensive guys go," but the fact is, they're all back here. Uh, and we actually had a couple linebackers too. Dana Lockhart went to West Florida, who played the national championship last year. Uh, and Nazir Wright actually went to uh, uh, Stephen F. Austin in Texas, so FCS Division One school. Uh, other than that, we got a lot of guys going into their senior years. Gary Johnson, like we mentioned earlier, at Texas. Marquise Blair uh, at University of Utah. Um, God, I know I'm forgetting the whole yeah, bunch. You've got, there's a I mean, lot you, out you've there. Got, yeah, um, you've got them all over the Trying to go back to my 2016 Sage Young. Sage Young is the starting uh, left guard for uh, Vanderbilt University in the SEC. Um, That's really exciting to see all of brain. those there's, athletes there's, all over, there's all over the nation. Yeah, there's in fact, yeah, there'll, be, there'll be easily 35 guys playing on Saturdays this year that played at Dodge City at one point or another, and there'll be four that are playing on Sundays. I want to make mention of one more thing. I want to uh, make sure and mention this to the to the community, to the viewers, to the fans, to the people here live in the audience. As I was walking in, Athletic Director Ripple had informed me that Dodge City Community College's football program has the top GPA in the conference. Uh, I believe, and based on what you told me, for the third year um, in a row. Do you want to speak to, to that? That's some really exciting exciting news. Yeah, I didn't actually know until he kind of just told me right before, because I usually don't release those statistics till like the end of the summer, so right about now. Um, so he just notified me. That's obviously a great honor, but three years running, we've had yeah, you know, the highest GPA in the conference. Um, and I want to say over four years, don't quote me on this, uh, but over the four years, we have the highest cumulative GPA because uh, I think there was one year we finished second, um, but if you took our cumulative over the three-year period, we actually were one. And so, uh, I mean, obviously a, a, an accomplishment that probably has less to do with me than anything else uh, and more to do with, you know, the commitment of our guys and our support staff, the people in the Academic Support Center. Absolutely. Um, the people in TRIO that, that, that advise our guys that are in their program, uh, some of the advisors that are that are on campus as well. And we, we've managed to, to, to obviously top that list and, you know, it, in a, in a profession where you're evaluated on, you're in a performance-based industry, uh, most of the time, you know, people generally only think you're evaluated by your wins and your losses. And, and uh, we're in kind of a unique profession here at the junior college level. You know, at the four-year level, you have recruiting classes that you bring in and they're limited. You might bring in 20 to 20, you know, the Division One guys, they're limited. They, they can only bring in 25 a year. You know, we're bringing in 65 a year, so we have to worry about our incoming guys, but we have the the dual purpose of helping our guys leave as well. So we're managing guys coming in and we're managing guys going out. Um, so we have to manage, you know, a lot more from that standpoint, a lot more work involved going into, you know, both those aspects. Um, but from a GPA standpoint, obviously as well, there, there's a lot that goes into helping guys that basically are coming here for, you know, generally having some type of academic deficiency, uh, whether documented or undocumented. Uh, sometimes their, their deficiency is just laziness. They're, they're capable, they just have never been given any direction, uh, either parental or through the educational system. So, um, you know, it's about evaluating, you know, what they're capable of and, and putting them in situations where they can be successful, uh, not only schedule-wise, but in, uh, you know, resources to, letting them know what resources are available to them and then teaching them how to use, you know, it's easy to say, well, yeah, we have a library and it has all these books and, and there's these computers and you can go use them. and, and Libraries are great, but if you've never been taught how to use a library, Absolutely. you know, you can send a kid to class with a notebook, but if he doesn't know how to take notes and he's never been taught how to take notes, those are things that, that they need to be taught and, and they don't understand. Coach, I want to thank you for coming in. Yeah, I appreciate Congratulations on that honor to you, your student athletes, and your staff. Appreciate Good luck it. on Thursday. Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks a bunch. Folks, that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. We want to thank Jake Ripple, Coach Williams, and Coach Thomas for taking the time to talk to us this evening. We thank everyone for coming out. I uh, hope to see you next week. Please join us, same place, same time, next Monday. Everybody, good evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>